angle gauges. A visual representation of angle gauges is shown in this video. What is angle gauges? Angle gauges are pieces of hardened and stabilized steel. It is similar to slip gauge blocks but the difference is that one face will be inclined to a particular angle. Each block is marked with V to indicate the direction of the block. The angle gauges are generally used in industries for the quick measurement of angles between two surfaces. It is used to check whether the workpiece is within the tolerance angle or not. An autocollimator is an optical instrument. It is a non-contact type instrument, which is used for measuring angles. They are used to align components and measure deflection in optical or mechanical systems. There are basically two types of autocollimators. Visual autocollimator and digital autocollimator. This video covers visual autocollimator. A visual autocollimator can measure angles as small as one arc second, that is, 4.85 micro radians. While an electronic autocollimator can have up to 100 times more resolution. This video will cover the followings about the visual autocollimator. 1. Working principle. 2. Construction. 3. Working. 4. Uses. Working principle. A light ray passing from a collimating lens strikes on a plane reflector and gets reflected back in the same path. This happens only if the plane reflector is perpendicular to the incident rays. In this case, the reflected rays fall at the same point from where they were projected. That is at point O. If suppose the reflector or the surface is at an angle theta. In this case the incident rays are reflected at angle 2 theta and the reflected rays falls at point O dash. By knowing this distance between O and O dash, which can be denoted by X, we can find out the angle theta by using this relationship, which says X is equal to 2 theta into F. Here F is the focal length of the objective lens. This is the working principle behind autocollimator. Let us see the construction of autocollimator. It consists of following parts. Light source. Filter. Condenser lens. Diffuser. Objective radical. Beam splitter. Objective lens. Eyepiece. Working of autocollimator. 
The light rays from the light source passes through the filter. This filter selectively transmits light in a particular range of wavelength. That means, only particular colors with a particular range will be allowed to pass through the filter while it absorbed the remaining colors. After passing through the filter, the light beam passes through the condenser lens. Condenser lens helps in rendering a divergent beam from a point source into a parallel beam. This helps in rendering a sharper image. Then the light beam passes from diffuser, which will scatter light in some manner to transmit soft light. After passing through the diffuser, the beam of light will pass through objective radical. Then it falls onto the beam splitter. Here, the beam of light splits into two, and it gets projected on both the sides. The beam of light traveling on the left-hand side will pass through the eyepiece radical and eyepiece lens. On the other hand, the beam of light traveling in the right side will pass through the objective lens and falls on the plane reflector. If the plane reflector, which is workpiece surface, if it is perpendicular to the beam of light, it will reflect the beam of light in the same path. Hence, both the beams will fall at the same point. Let us consider this point B, O. Suppose, if the workpiece surface is at angle theta, then the beam of light will be reflected back at an angle, 2 theta. Therefore, the reflected beam of light will fall at a different point. Let us consider this point to be O dash. By knowing the distance between O and O dash, which we have denoted by X, and by knowing the focal length of the lens, we can use this relationship to find out the angle theta. This is the working of autocollimator. Uses or application of autocollimator. Visual autocollimators are used for aligning laser rod ends, checking the face parallelism of optical windows and wedges. Electronic and digital autocollimators are used for monitoring angular movement over long periods of times for checking angular position repeatability in mechanical systems, etc. The digital autocollimator is a general purpose instrument designed to measure very small angular displacements in both the laboratory and machine shop environment. The system uses a dual axis measurement system that combines state-of-the-art photonics and digital imaging technologies to measure two angular positions relative to the reflective surface. The digital autocollimator is commonly used in optical alignments, equipment alignments, mechanical analyses, and surface flatness measurements. Shown here, it can be used in conjunction with the API swivel check to verify the accuracy of rotary tables. In this video, we will show how the API digital autocollimator can be used to measure the straightness of a simple rail by collecting angular data and then converting that data into a straightness graph. Prior to performing a measurement, the autocollimator and target must be aligned. Once put into place, the digital autocollimator rests on a three-point mounting system which establishes a planar reference. A leveling base provides three-dimensional adjustment control. After a rough alignment, a sighting device is used to make final adjustments. The lens cap is put into place, and the sighting device is placed between the autocollimator and our reflective surface, in this case, a flat mirror mounted to the rail. Looking through the sighting device, fine adjustments are made on the mirror to center the crosshairs which are seen on the lens cap. To finish alignment, the lens cap is removed and the sighting device is used again to verify alignment of the autocollimator base. The digital autocollimator can be operated using a computer and the included software, or simply by using the interface on the control box. Shown here, the angular deviation is displayed on the control box readout to aid in the final adjustments. Typical system alignments are completed within just a few minutes. Now for our straightness example, we will use the API software to collect data about our rail. Here we see the digital autocollimator software starting up. The on-screen display shows the current angular deviation. To begin collecting data, we select the start icon to initiate the measurement mode. We then key in the measurement parameters such as starting position, ending position, and increments we will move our mirror down the rail. To collect a data position, we press the Enter key or select the Measure icon from the toolbar. Once a data point has been collected, we can then move our mirror down the rail. In our example, we do this by hand. 
we repeat this procedure of collecting data points and then moving the mirror until we reach the end of the rail. We then return to the initial position and do a second run of measurements. Once our measurements are complete, click the Save icon on the toolbar to end data collection and to save the collected data to a text file. Saved measurement data may be viewed in report format or printed using the Open Data File function. To determine straightness, the measurement data needs to be converted from our Angular measurement data. To do so, we go to the File menu or the Toolbar Open icon to open the report we just saved. We then select the Angular to Straightness option from the File menu. Finally, we click the Convert button to perform the data conversion. The straightness graph is then generated on the screen. Sign bar. The sign bar is the most accurate instrument for measuring angles. It consists of an accurate straight rectangular bar made of high quality steel and having two accurately lapped cylindrical plugs or rollers at the ends. Relief holes are sometimes provided to reduce the weight of the sign bar. Sign bar is specified by the distance between the centers of two rollers. That can be 100 mm, 200 mm, 250 mm, or 300 mm. Two rollers must be of same diameters. The various parts of sign bar are hardened before grinding and lapping. The rollers are so fixed that, when sign bar is placed on surface plate, the surface of the bar is exactly parallel to surface plate. Types of available sign bars. Sign bars are available in different forms and sizes, according to the purpose of its use and method of application. These are the different types of sign bars. If you are new to this channel click on the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so that you will never miss an update. Principle of working of sign bar. The principle of operation of the sign bar is based upon the application of trigonometry. In a right angle triangle ABC, the ratio of the length BC to that of the length AB is referred to as the sine of the angle theta. The ratio will always be the same near respective of the length of sides of the triangle. By placing the slip gauges under one roller, the bar surface can be made parallel to any angular surface of work. Then by measuring the total height made by slip gauges, the angle can be found by using this relationship, where h equals height made by slip gauges, and l equals distance of between the centers of rollers. Let us see how the angle of small component is measured using sine bar. For checking the angle of small size components, a sign bar is set up to an approximate angle on a surface plate by suitable combination of slip gauges. The component being checked is placed over the surface of a sign bar. A dial gauge is mounted upon a suitable stand, such as universal surface gauge. It is moved over the component throughout its length. If there is a variation in parallelism of the upper surface of the component and the surface plate, it is indicated by the deflection of pointer. Now, we tried to adjust the slip gauge's height so that the dial indicator reads zero in this position. By knowing the height of the slip gauges which we denote as h and distance between the centers of the cylinders provided on the sign bar, we can use this relationship to find out angle theta made by the component surface. Now let us see how sign bars are used to measure the angles of large components. When component is too large to be mounted on the sign bar, the sign bar can be mounted on the component. The height over the rollers is measured by means of a vernier height gauge. A dial gauge is also used to check the measuring pressure. We adjust the height gauge until the dial gauge reads zero each time. The difference of the two height gauges reading being the height h. We can use this relationship to find out the angle theta, where r1 is the reading from height gauge 1 and r2 is the reading from height gauge 2. Uses of sign bar. A sign bar has to be used in conjunction with a surface plate and slip gauges. Sign bar is used for checking angle of components, taper of work pieces, etc. It is also used for setting a work to a known required angle. Accuracy requirement of sign bar. Sign bar is more accurate for angles between 15 degrees to 45 degrees below and above to this limit, angles measured are not much more accurate. 
If a sign bar is to be accurate then the following properties must exist. 1. The distance between centers, which is denoted by L, must be precisely known. 2. The axes of rollers must be parallel to each other. 3. The upper surface of the sign bar must be flat and parallel. 4. The rollers must be of identical diameters and round within a close tolerance. Sources of errors in sign bar. 1. Constant angle error. This is caused if the working surface and the cylinder axes are not parallel. 2. Progressive angle error. This is due to the error in cylinder center distance. 3. Gauge block tolerance accumulation is also a source of progressive error. As stated earlier, we can use the gauge blocks for several different purposes. We can build up an accurate size to do calibration or to set a standard such as uh, the height gauge we had a look at in a previous video. In this particular clip, what we're looking at is we're looking at a sign bar set up with the gauge blocks. And what's going to happen is it's going to mimic a triangle. So with the angle we've created, we are going to have a triangle here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set some work on top here that is going to mimic this triangle. So we can either check an angle or we could scribe an angle or we could machine an angle. Okay, so here's a piece of work that we've set on the sign bar. And as you can see, what we're trying to do is we're trying to recreate the triangle that is going to be on this, this sign bar, which is mimicking the triangle that's going to be on the bottom here. So this is the angle that we did the build up for. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to mimic this angle here. And if you have a look here, what we have is we have a sign bar with 5 inch centers. So this is where we are getting that 5 in the trig equation we were looking at. So now that we have this set up, if this piece was machined properly, we should be able to put a dial indicator on the surface and run it back and forth across the top of the surface. And as long as it's zero, it tells us that angle was machined properly. Also, too, we could set it up and finish it to this angle. Or we could end up scribing to do layout type of work with this type of situation. So here's, the, again, the gauge block build up and a sign bar. And we have several different uses for it. Very, very accurate setup.